reaction mechanism seven. This is a polymerization doing an addition reaction between an alkene polymer and itself. Uh, usually this is going to be acid catalyzed. Again, we're going to need to pick an acid that is not going to actually react with the conjugate base. It's not going to actually react with the double bond. So we would avoid things like HCl, HBr, HI, where we would see a Markovnikov addition reaction going on. So I want to go through the mechanism. If you look at the end of the video, you can actually see me do a polymerization reaction. Uh, it's not an addition one, but it kind of gave you the idea. Uh, the way this starts, like all addition reactions with an alkene, is that we need some kind of electrophile. And so from our acid, we're going to be pulling an H plus. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to form a bond between our double bond and the H plus of this. Uh, and then, of course, the electrons are going to stay behind over there, or like that. So what we're going to form is we're going to form a carbon-carbon single bond. And then we're going to have a hydrogen on one of the sides. So we pull our H+, plus, let's say it goes over here. We'll still have two hydrogens here. Now that leaves this carbon with just three bonds. So we have a carbocation positively charged. Okay. After that reaction starts, what's going to happen very quickly is that this is going to seek out anything with negative charge. So a second of these will then react with it and kind of form a chain. So this double bond would then form a bond with this, which would then result in a dimer from our monomer. So let's switch colors here. So what we would end up with then is we would end up with four carbons in a row. And on the tail end of one, we would have our carbocation intermediate from this. So let's say that this carbon attaches to this one. This carbon then is going to be lacking a fourth bond, so it's going to have a positive charge. And what that means is that a third of our ethenes can come along and then form another reaction with this end and form a trimer. And then continuing on down that chain again and again and again, when we represent that long chain by writing this out, where this is kind of our base structure here, uh, and then we would say that it's n of those units long. So what you're seeing here is how we represent the monomer, the single piece that composes this, and how we represent the polymer that composes this. For naming purposes, the monomer in this case is ethene, which has the common name of ethylene. And our polymer then would be polyethene, and it would have the common name of polyethylene. So that's the way the mechanism works to kind of create this long chain. In addition to that, for IV chemistry specifically, you should understand the relationship between the polymer and the monomer. Specifically, a lot of students look at this and see a double bond here, a single bond here, and don't understand how that change has occurred. For the mechanism, you can see that it starts with the acid catalyst causing that to form a single bond, and then from there the double bonds are used to link these different monomers together. And so this is still called polyethene, even though there's not a double bond present, because it's composed of ethene monomers. So what's important beyond all of this mechanism is that you understand how to compose these different things. So for example, if I took a different monomer, This would be chloroethene, uh, also called vinyl chloride. And you could then predict what the polymer component of that would look like. So I had an acid catalyst to this. We would go with something benign for the conjugate base. Sulfuric so acid is probably our go-to one for all of these. Uh, and what we would end up forming is a polymer where we have two hydrogens attached to the one carbon and one chlorine attached to the other. It doesn't matter where that chlorine goes. In fact, it might vary in position depending on your synthesis methods, um, whether it turns out isotactic or atactic. But what's important is that this is kind of our relationship between these. And this would be our pinyl, polyvinyl chloride that we would produce from it. Okay. Same thing in reverse. If you've given a polymer for the final structure, so here's polystyrene. all kinds of different things, but polystyrene is going to have a phenyl group or a benzene ring attached. So if we said what monomer would compose that for an alkene addition reaction, we would have started with styrene, which 
have a benzene ring or a phenyl group on one of the carbons, and then hydrogens on the other. Now, when you do these reactions, you're going to make this really, really long chain, so, and it's probably going to be bigger than single digits, probably more up towards 100 or so. So we have this long chain, all composed of covalent bonds, which gives us a lot of strength, and it also gives us very strong intermolecular forces, but we're dealing with intermolecular forces between strands, which give these things their pliability and their moldability, hence the term plastic. So we can use a lot of these for plastics because of that ability that as we increase the temperature and there's more motion, that we can disrupt those intermolecular forces and then mold them as we please. Here we're going to do a polymerization reaction. We're going to take a little bit of this mixture here, put it into the cup, try and get it to be about 30 milliliters. Which I have marked on a different cup to kind of give me a gauge. Then I'm going to add some blue food coloring to this. That's going to mix in. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second mixture to this and I want to add about the same amount as what I added here right up to there. We're just going to give this one more good stir. What's going to happen is as these two react they're going to polymerize and additionally as they polymerize they're going to form a gas and so the gas is going to get trapped in the polymer and that's going to give us a polyurethane foam and hopefully a nice blue color for that too. So now we can sit back and wait for that reaction to undergo, and as that happens, we're going to see this start to produce a polyurethane foam that's quite large. So right now this is an exothermic process and we're generating a gas. Previous hours gone through and we created a purple foam and of course a yellow foam to go with them. Uh, these do harden but not immediately so if I were to take this and prod this with a stirring stick right now it's not going to be completely formed. It's going to be kind of mushy but as time goes on that's going to cool and we'll end up with our polyurethane foam.